Welcome back. In this video, we're going to solve trigonometric equations. Our objectives are to set up some guidelines for solving trig equations. We'll run through some samples, and then we'll also use inverse functions. So let's take a look at our guidelines. In solving trigonometric equations, our primary goal is going to be to isolate the trigonometric function, and then once we do that, then solve for x. In order to do that, like we do in algebra, we'll collect our like terms, we'll follow the typical algebraic processes in solving equations, and we'll also do some factoring. So let's take a look at our first sample here. We have 2 sine of x minus 1 equals 0. Following our primary goal, we want to isolate the trig function. So we're going to isolate sine of x. So if we add 1 to both sides, we get 2 sine of x equals 1. Dividing by 2, sine of x equals 1 half. Well, now our goal is to solve for x. Well, we know based on our unit circle that the sine of x is 1 half in two locations at pi over 6 and at 5 pi over 6. So those are our two answers for x. x would be 5 pi over 6 and pi over 6. So if we're in just the interval from 0 to 2 pi, those would be our answers. However, sine, while it has a period of 2 pi, again, it's periodic. So if we're only in that interval, that's fine, 5 pi over 6 and pi over 6. But if we're looking for just a general form for the value for x, x would be pi over 6 plus 2n pi, where n is the number of periods. And x is 5 pi over 6 plus 2 n pi, where n equals the number of periods, or the number of loops around the unit circle, or the number of times through our cycle. Let's take a look at sample 2. Here we have tangent squared, so we said we'd do examples by extracting square roots. So again, our primary goal, we want to get tangent squared all by itself. So we'll add 1 to both sides. 3 times tangent squared x equals 1. Dividing by 3, tangent squared x equals 1 third. But we want tangent of x. We square root both sides. Tangent of x equals 1 over the square root of 3 or rationalized, it's the square root of 3 over 3. Where is tangent 1 over the square root of 3? It turns out that tangent, of course, is y over x, so grabbing our numerators at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, our tangent is 1 over the square root of 3. Just showing my ordered pairs on the unit circle there. What we're saying here is the arctangent of 1 over the square root of 3 is equal to x, and x is either pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Now, all of our answers aren't going to be pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, more coincidental than anything else here on these two samples. Well, tangent has a period of pi, so there are going to be infinite solutions again like we had previously, right? Every loop around the uh, unit circle is going to be a, uh, in fact, in this case, halfway around the unit circle is going to give us our answers again. Our solution here is just in the interval of 0 to pi, where it's pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. But our general form, where n equals the number of periods, will then be x equals pi over 6 plus the number of periods times pi. And x equals 5 pi over 6 plus the number of periods times pi. In our third example, we're going to solve by factoring. So we have here cotangent of x times cosine squared x equals 2 cotangent of x. So if we want to factor, we've got to get one side equal to 0. So we will subtract 
two cotangent of x from both sides and set this equal to zero, which gives us cotangent of x times cosine squared x minus two cotangent x equals zero. Well, if I factor out a GCF of cotangent of x, I'm left with cotangent of x times cosine squared x minus two, still equal to zero. And now I've got my two factors, so I can set each one of our factors equal to zero. So I set cotangent of x equal to zero and cosine squared x minus two equal to zero. Using our arc cotangent, our cotangent of zero is gonna equal x. Here, cosine squared x is gonna, if I add two to both sides, cosine squared x is gonna equal two, and I'll square root both sides. I might as well write that down. Cosine squared x equals two. And once I square root both sides, I get cosine x equals plus or minus the square root of two. And I've got a note down here below, the cosine square, cosine of x is plus or minus the square root of two. That is a value that's greater than one. We aren't gonna be able to get any kind of answer here. This is gonna be no solution. It's outside the range of cosine. So the arc cosine square root of two equals x will give us no solution. However, the arc cotangent of zero equals x, well that occurs at pi over two. We get pi over two for our answer. So x equals pi over two. Now that's in the first interval from zero to pi, but as a general answer for every period, we have to account for that. So it's pi over two plus n times pi. In sample four, we want to find all the solutions in the interval from zero to two pi for two sine squared x minus sine x minus one. This one we're going to factor. So you can do substitution if you want to do u substitution here, but two is prime, factors of sine squared are just going to be sine and sine, and one is prime, so this should be fairly easy to factor. 2 sine of x is going to be one of the factors of 2 sine squared of x. And the other factor will have to be sine of x. And the factors of 1 will be positive 1 and negative 1. So our only question is, is where do we put our uh, plus and minus here? So both of these are going to be 1. 1 times 1 is 1. And if I put the minus here and the plus here, I'm going to end up with correctly factored equation. And now I set each one of my factors equal to zero. Two sine of x plus one equals zero. So two sine of x equals negative one. Divide both sides by two. Sine of x equals negative one half. So we're going to ask ourselves the arc sine of negative one half equals x. So where on our unit circle is sine negative one half, that'll give us the angle that we're looking for. And that of course occurs at seven pi over six and 11 pi over six. And our other factor, sine of x minus one equals zero, sine of x equals one, arc sine of one, equals our angle x in radians. The sine is one, this is gonna be one of our quadrantals. Sine is one at pi over two. Since we're looking for just the interval zero to two pi, we don't need our general form here in this answer, and we can move on to our next sample. In sample five, we wanna rewrite this as a single trig function. We'd love to be able to factor two sine squared x plus three cosine x minus one, but we don't have the same trig function. So as we did in the previous section, we would love to rewrite this in terms of either sine or cosine. And it turns out 
that sine squared x equals one minus cosine squared x. So we will use that to replace sine squared x. So I have two times one minus cosine squared x plus three cosine x minus one equals zero. I'll distribute my two, so I get two minus two cosine squared x plus three cosine x minus one equals zero. And I realize now that I copied my problem wrong, so I am going to fix that so that one becomes a three. So now this is gonna work for us. I'm gonna combine my like terms here in this step or in the next step. So we'll combine like terms. I'm also gonna factor out negative one. So when I do that, if I, because I don't want negative two cosine squared x, I want positive two co cosine squared x. So I factor out my negative, I get two cosine squared x minus three cosine of x. My two and my negative three became negative one, but I'm factoring out a negative one, so that becomes positive one equals zero. And now I can go ahead and factor. So the opposite of two cosine x, so I'm factoring two cosine squared x. I'll factor that to two cosine x times cosine of x. Factors of one would be one and one. And since we have a negative or minus three cosine, they have to add up to negative three. So both of these factors have to be negative. Now I go ahead and set each one of these equal to zero. Two cosine of x minus one equals zero cosine of x equals one half, and cosine of x minus one equals zero, cosine of x equals one. So we've got a quadrantal here, right? The arc cosine of one equals x, and that occurs at x equals zero, and cosine of x equals one half, that occurs at pi over three and five pi over three. So if I want those two in general form, I'm running out of space here. I've got three different answers. So I get x equals pi over three plus n times two pi. I get x equals five pi over three. I've got my pi plus n times two pi or two pi n. And I also get x equals two pi n because I have to do that for my x equals zero. And finally here in objective three, we're gonna solve secant squared x minus two tangent x equals four. We don't have the same trig functions, but secant squared x is the equivalent of one minus tangent squared x. So now we can replace secant squared x with one minus tangent squared x. Making a quick correction, secant squared x equals one plus tangent squared x. One plus tangent squared x minus two tangent of x equals four. I want a factor, so I have to set one side equal to zero, so I'm gonna subtract four from both sides. Reorganizing, I get tangent squared x minus two tangent of x minus three equals zero. I'm gonna go ahead and factor. My factors of tangent squared x are tangent of x and tangent of x. And my factors of three are gonna be one and three. And I need a negative two, so if I do plus one and minus three, though, that'll add up to negative two. Setting each equal to zero, I get tangent of x equals negative one, and tangent of x equals three. The arctangent of negative one equals x. Well, where is the tangent one or negative one? It happens at the pi over fours in the second and fourth quadrants. Tangent is in the period from negative pi over two to pi over two. So in quadrants one and four. So we are gonna be working in quadrant four here. We've got the square root of two over two and the negative square root of two over two, which is negative pi over four. 
So our answer here, x equals negative pi over 4 plus n times pi. And for our tangent of x equals 3, the arctangent of 3 is equal to x, and you can also write that as the arctangent of 3 equals x. You'll see that as well. And in our general form, we can say x equals the arctangent of 3 plus n times pi. And since this is in our unit circle, we just have to leave that in that particular form. We don't need our calculator or anything uh, to dig that out. So that wraps up solving trigonometric equations, and we'll get some more practice with that when I see you in class.